I just thought that these verses illustrate that Jesus would die as a sacrifice for sin and that um, not only um, die but rise again for life, uh, rise again in life. So my question is, why don't you encourage people to read the Bible for themselves rather than emphasising your own books? My son, what you're doing is, you're also suggesting to me what I read and how I should understand. See, you're doing to me. And every Christian, when you come and knock at my door, you want me to see the Bible the way you see it. If you got blinkers on, you also want me to put blinkers on to see. So I want to do that, if you can. Get one of your Greek bishops, you know, because I can see the English-speaking bishops are, 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 are shivering. They are jittery. On April 1996, Center for Islamic Dawa and Education presented an interfaith lecture entitled Christ in Islam, which was held in Sydney Town Hall, Australia, where Sheikh Ahmed Didat as the speaker. And on one occasion in the Q&A session, Sheikh Didat challenged Christians to bring out Greek bishops to help Christianity win the debate against him because other bishops didn't dare to face him. I noticed that this is a multilingual service, so if I may, I'll spice things up a bit. Um, I'm of Greek origin, and the Greek word for Easter is the word Pascha, and that means Passover. And that's quite appropriate for Easter, because like the lamb that was sacrificed in Egypt, which the Israelites sprayed on the door of their houses, to deliver them from Egypt. So Jesus, when he died, the blood which he shed delivered them from deliver, can deliver us from slavery and sin. So, and if this isn't the only Old Testament reference which Jesus uses to say that he will die and rise again from the dead. If I may quote from Isaiah 53, um, Isaiah the prophet says. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Now, I've quoted three verses there. They're not um, consecutive. Um, you may read the whole chapter if you like. But I just thought that these verses illustrate that Jesus would die as a sacrifice for sin and that um, not only um, die, but rise again for life. Uh, rise again in life. So my question is, why don't you encourage people to read the Bible for themselves rather than emphasising your own books? My son, what you're doing is, you're also suggesting to me what I read and how I should understand. See, you're doing to me. And every Christian, when you come and knock at my door, you want me to see the Bible the way you see it. If you got blinkers on, you also want me to put blinkers on to see. That's what you do. That is what you are trying to do to me. So you see, at the outset I said that there are 300 prophecies were fulfilled. But I said the whale, the whale that got away, that whale came from the mouth of Jesus. Jesus spoke about Jonah and the whale. That miracle you, he didn't fulfill. Now, man, you bring a thousand prophecies to, to say it was justified, justified. I said, the one that Jesus gave himself with his own mouth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38, 39, and 40. Now, I want you to explain that. That the sign he gave, what? That Isaiah, so and so. Mm -hmm, nothing at all. He said, this is the only miracle I'm giving you to the Jews. That what happened to him is going to happen to me. Did that happen? That's all. Did that happen? 
in a court of law, if a man had made certain utterances, I said, this is the promise he made. Did he fulfill it? Again and again, he is failing, according to your explanation. When I say yours, I mean the Christian explanation. He is failing again and again. So as a Jew, if I was the Jew, I read your book, I said the man was an imposter and he deserved to die. He, if he had escaped that by the skin of his teeth, I said if you can catch him again, we will crucify him a second time. If I was a Jew, according to his own words, he is failing again and again. You justify that or you get your bishop, your Greek bishop. Tell him if he knows English. He said, look, this man is prepared to come over all the way at his own expense from South Africa to have a dialogue in an open field where we can get 50,000 people. Hmm? And present your case, man. The thousands of Muslims will come and listen to your arguments. And of course, thousands of Christians will also listen to our arguments. So I want to do that, if you can. Get one of your Greek bishops, you know, because I can see the English-speaking bishops are, 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 are shivering. They are jittery. Maybe the Greek, the Greek, you know, the ancient Greece, Greek, he might be bolder. Try, try and get some Greek, Greek bishop. Okay? Okay, nice. Yes, yes, yes. 300 were fulfilled, I agree. I said, the whale that got away, what have you to say to that? That you allow this whale, whale, whale fish to get away out of your net. You are a very unfortunate creature, man. Huh? You, you're going to catch little fish. When you're the whale, you allow such a big thing to get away from your hands. That's what happened. This is what, according to your scripture, Jesus failed again and again to support you. He's not supporting you, he's supporting me. Right. There'll be last two questions. No, finish now. Last two questions, this lady here, and one more from this side, if there is. Only last two questions. You must appreciate that this is an old machine, 78 year old, you know, and I have come across you know, those time barriers, you know, please, you know, have a little mercy on me. Not I'm trying to run away, mm -hmm. but this, after all, the body, there's a limit to what it can take. Last two questions, this lady here and one more. Thank you, my sister, please. I thank you that I have the privilege to be here tonight to listen to you. I haven't read the Quran. You stimulated me. Perhaps I should read the Quran. But I would like to know what you believe with the ascension of Jesus. Do you believe that he actually lived? So then what happened to Jesus if he lived, if he did not die, if he lived? No. The Quranic ayah, the verse that I read to you, the last expression I said was, Bal rafahullahu ilayh. But Allah took him up to himself. We Muslims believe that God Almighty took him up, saved him from that ignoble death and nakedness of the cross, because the people on the cross were absolutely naked. They didn't respect you to put a little loincloth around the man. The messenger of God, you say the son of God, naked and bare before the world, you know, flies buzzing around him. No, no, no. God Almighty didn't allow that to happen to his servant, his messenger, Jesus. God saved him and took him up. And I say, he's coming back to just you. He is coming back. To do what? You know, we Muslims, we believe and we claim that Islam is the culmination, the fulfillment of all of God's revelation to man. All true guidance, all guidance is given to us. We don't have to learn anything new from Jesus or Moses or Muhammad anymore. Whatever God wanted to give, He's given it to us. So what is Jesus coming to do? I says, no, He's coming along to rectify you. And he's telling you in the Gospel of St. Matthew, he says, many will say to me on that day, in his second coming, on his return, and many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many mighty works? They're going to ask Jesus, didn't we do all these things? We build hospitals. You know, orphanages, and we look after, after the Aborigines, and we look after the Maoris, uh -huh, and we look after the Indians. Oh, yes, yes, all these things you did. Uh, we educated all these fools, you know, we civilized them, we cultured them. Yes, 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 you did all the things. So, did we not prophesy in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many mighty works? What does Jesus say to that? He said, I never knew you. He said, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
You are evil doers. You are evil mongers. Amazing. You who are working in the name of Christ, looking after the lepers, looking after orphans, Mother Teresa, wonderful work she's doing. By God, I tell you. You know, I, I bow my head down out of respect for her. All the wonderful things you people are doing. The way you look after the animals. You know, animal conservation to preserve life. Ooh, fantastic things you are doing. But for human beings as well. What what you are doing? And that's what you're gonna say to Jesus. I'm asking the Christians, answer me. You know why? You know why? Because you call him Lord. He is not your Lord. He is not your God. That's the reason. That is the reason. He's telling you, come, come, come. I'll teach you how to pray and pray like this. And he puts the words in your mouth. Like a little baby, like a little child. Pray like this. Oh, our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Including Judas. Because Judas was in the group. He's the father of everybody. The sinner and the saint. He's the creator, Lord, cherisher, sustainer. Call him Father, okay. O oh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where did he say the Father of Jesus Christ in heaven? Oh, Jesus Christ, my Lord in heaven. Where? He said, this is how you pray. But you have forgotten that. You're worshipping him instead of worshipping the Father. Uh, did you say, the lady, the lady, did you say you got the Quran? You have a Quran? 